I am so overwhelmed with all the advice online about supplements, with wellness influencers claiming that it's going to change your life. And I don't have my rings on. Oh, maybe that was the piece that was missing. Try again. I am so overwhelmed with all the advice online about which supplements we should be taking, with wellness influencers claiming that they are going to transform your life without telling us the evidence base behind it. And they're pretty expensive and it can leave us out of pocket. So if you're feeling just as confused as I am, then welcome to this video where we will be discussing eight supplements that have some backing by science that I take to see if they have a place in your life. And hi, if you're new here, I'm Monica, also known as Dr. Mon. I'm an NHS GP in London and I've been a doctor for eight years now. I share my life inside and outside of the clinic online and I'm here to be a credible and relatable source of science-backed information to help you live your best, healthiest and happiest life. Before we get into talking about supplements, one of the things I always say to my patients when we discuss supplements is that nutrition always comes first. Supplements are only a fraction of the total picture and nutrition is key, meaning a diverse whole foods balanced plate is essential for us to get adequate nutrition. However, if you're a busybody like me trying to fit in life, fitness, wedding, marriage, house renovation, or have certain dietary requirements, then supplements may have a place in your life. With that out of the way, let's get into the first one. The first one I want to talk about is collagen. Collagen is a protein that plays a key role in providing structure to our skin, our bones, our muscles, and our connective tissue. As we get older, our collagen declines and we may see a decline in our skin quality, meaning less elasticity and dehydration, but is supplementing with collagen actually going to work? There have been a few studies that have shown that marine hydrolyzed collagen, so fish-derived smaller molecule collagen, may have some positive benefits on improving our skin's hydration and elasticity. However, there are some limitations to these studies. Firstly, the sample size was quite small and the population wasn't that diverse. Secondly, some of these studies have actually been funded by the companies that make the collagen. So you can say that they had an ulterior motive. But the overall consensus is that it may have an impact in improving your skin hydration and elasticity. However, we need higher quality evidence. I asked my sister who, fun fact, is a dermatologist on her thoughts on collagen supplementation and the skin. The number one cause of collagen depletion is actually sun exposure. So if we can do a few things each day to limit the effects of sun exposure on our skin, then that can help. I also asked my husband, who is a sports and exercise medicine consultant, about his view on collagen supplementation and kind of bone, muscle and tissue repair. And he has said that it may help in tissue repair, but again, higher quality evidence is needed. Up next, we have vitamin C and zinc. Now, I see a lot of people in my clinic with coughs and colds, and you best believe that I'm going to be doing everything I can to help my immune system, because if I don't work, I don't get paid. We know that vitamin C and zinc play an important role in our immune function and reduce the risk, the severity and the duration of infectious diseases. Vitamin C is an antioxidant, which means that it prevents and slows down damage to our cells from free radicals, which can be in cigarette smoke, pollution, alcohol and so much more. And zinc plays a role in healing wounds, supporting cell growth and our immune system. Supplementing with vitamin C and zinc can help provide that support to our immune system. And common food sources of vitamin C can be citrus fruits, kiwis, peppers. And for zinc, it can be seafood, red meat, dairy and whole grains. The third supplement has been described as the unsung hero of wellness. But is it justified? And if you guessed it, I'm talking about magnesium. I actually like to describe magnesium as the backstage manager of our entire body. It's involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions and plays an important role from our muscles, our nerves, our energy, our mood and our sleep, to name a few. And much like your bestie, magnesium is going to show up when you need it the most. If you can't sleep, if you're stressed, if you have period pains, magnesium is going to be there. In terms of supplementations, there are different forms of magnesium that you can get. Magnesium malate can help with your cognition and your energy. Magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salts that we put in the bath, can help with our muscles. Magnesium glycinate can help with our sleep. And magnesium citrate is used as a laxative. Supplementation with magnesium may help with muscle recovery, sleep and relaxation. However, higher quality evidence is needed. And in terms of food sources of magnesium, you can get it through dark chocolate, bonus, leafy greens, avocado, nuts and seeds, black beans and legumes. 
Now, in order for me to describe the fourth one, I have to tell you a bit of information and it might be TMI. I have had heavy periods for all of my life and I've been a vegetarian for most of my life up until recently where I introduced fish and chicken, but that's a story for another day. I have had multiple blood tests that show that I am iron deficient and I have been prescribed iron tablets before. Being iron deficient can leave you feeling awful. It can cause changes to your hair, your nails, your skin, your mouth, ulcers, changes to your tongue, to name a few. Iron is so important because it makes the red blood cells that carry oxygen to our tissues. Now, if you are also taking iron tablets prescribed by your doctor, then there are ways that you can take them that can actually improve the amount of iron that you absorb. Number one, you can take them on alternate days, which can help reduce the tummy symptoms and actually improve the amount of iron that you absorb. Number two, you can take it with vitamin C, which can help improve the amount of iron that you absorb. Number three is to avoid taking it with things like tea, coffee, matcha, and milk, because that can actually reduce the amount of iron that you absorb from the tablet. And number four, it's recommended to take on an empty stomach. There are also over-the-counter iron supplements that you can buy that come in various forms like sprays, effervescent tablets, syrups and liquids. And in terms of food sources of iron, it's found in liver, red meat, beans, fruit and soybean. The next supplement we're going to talk about involves the sun. Vitamin D plays a crucial role in keeping our bones healthy. It's actually synthesized in the skin after we are exposed to sunlight and helps the absorption of calcium. We actually only get 10% of vitamin D from our diet. The rest we have to make and the amount that we make is influenced by various factors like our ethnicity, our genetics and our geography. The NHS recommends that we take 10 micrograms daily in winter months and there is some evidence to suggest that if we take vitamin D with K2, it allows the calcium that is absorbed by vitamin D to actually be placed in the bones rather than deposited in unwanted places like our arteries. Food sources of vitamin D include things like oily fish, eggs, dairy, milk, cheese and fortified foods. The next three supplements I'm going to talk about suit me as an individual because I am quite an active individual and fitness is a big part of my life. The first one being protein powder. In terms of protein powder, there are different types out there. There's whey, casein, pea, rice, and many more. We know that increased protein consumption can help with increased muscle mass. We also know that as we age, our muscle mass reduces. So increasing our protein consumption can help with that, all in combination with resistance training. The way I use protein powder is that if I feel like my protein intake needs a top up throughout the day, then I will use it. Remember, food always comes first and supplements are literally just a supplement. And the way I use it is by making something like a smoothie and incorporating other aspects like oats, healthy fats, bananas, berries, recipes of which I always drop on my Instagram. The second thing is creatine. Now creatine is all the rave at the moment and rightfully so because it is the most well-researched fitness supplement out there. We know that supplementation with creatine can actually have positive impacts on our fitness. It can increase our athletic performance and also our muscle mass. There is some emerging research into the impact of creatine in brain health, mental health and also across a woman's lifespan. There are some smaller studies to suggest that creatine supplementation may help in working memory and cognition in those who are sleep deprived and also may play a role in preserving muscle mass and bone health in older women. However, these sample sizes are very small and higher quality evidence is needed. The last supplement that we're going to talk about, which I don't take daily, is electrolytes. Electrolytes are minerals, they carry an electric charge and play hugely important roles in various physiological functions, like maintaining our fluid balance, regulating our blood pressure, supporting our nerve function, enabling our muscles to contract, and when they are out of balance, they can have some symptoms. Electrolytes seem to be having a movement online where people are consuming them daily, but factors to consider to see whether you need electrolytes at all, number one, if you're doing extended periods of exercise where you're sweating a lot, number two would be if you generally just sweat a lot, Number three, if you're in a hot environment where you're sweating a lot. So the general picture is if you're having prolonged fluid loss. It can also happen in things like diarrhea and vomiting. It's also important to know that electrolytes contain things like sodium, potassium, magnesium, and these are all things that you can get through your diet. So those are the eight supplements that we have spoken about today. Collagen, vitamin C and zinc, iron, magnesium, vitamin D and K2, protein powder, creatine and electrolytes. The key take home messages is to always remember that nutrition comes first. Supplements are literally what they say they are. They are a supplement to your nutrition. 
The second thing would be to understand your body and your individual needs. Just because I take a supplement, it doesn't mean that you have to too. It's important to look at your nutrition, look at your own body, your own needs and decide whether supplements, if any, have a place in your life. And the third thing would be that if you have any underlying health needs or medical conditions, please speak to your healthcare provider. If you've made it to the end of this video, then thank you so much for sticking with me. And I hope to see you for the next one. Whoa. Why was that so hard? Oh my God, (laughs) this is going to be so hard to edit. We move.